Hello and welcome to Tabletop 24. I'm Alan. I'm John. And I'm Brian. And thank you for joining us for another episode of We'll Play Again, where we look at games that we've got to the table recently and how quickly we want them to get back to the table and how quick you might want them to get back to the table. Today we have Smartphone Inc. from Arcane Wonders. First of all, this is a Kickstarter edition, so there are a lot of bits in here you might not see in the retail. It does include the 1.5 upgrade pack and a few other extras that you'll see, and there is a little bit of paint on the miniatures that were were involved it is a fully economic game um with a twist there's a lot of little different mechanics in there and they're going to be quite important to what we'll talk about but first off it's uh, probably about a 25 minute learn time for people um it's fairly simplistic once you know what's going on there's not much going on but it's, so you don't take that much to learn and then transferring that into a teach is going to be about 10 minutes um but there is one one real struggle on the teach that we'll get into um played it about uh, three times it is a large table this is the smaller of the two boards um because this is the one that came in the 1.5 upgrade pack there is a larger four to five player board um and this just essentially refines it down because there's a lot of area control mechanics so it means makes it a bit tighter for, for people to play and tear down time is going to take about five ten minutes you get these lovely um trays for your player pieces and you have a couple of bags for the tiles that, were, that I use in my copy. So it's quite quick to, to get it back down. And if you were just to reset it, it's probably no time at all. So it, you're going to be able to get it back out fairly quickly. Um, the one thing for me, and I know it is a Kickstarter game, but the one thing that, that got for this is the production quality. And uh, you've got some really heavy duty dual layer boards. You've got these miniatures that came through for uh, one of the mini expansions for the directors. The trays that you get with it now yes some of this is kickstarter items but um i think just overall it just looks uh looks outstanding on the table yeah it does look a bit daunting i think mm -hmm. um there's a lot going on um so when you first get up to the table thinking oh my goodness what we you know what's going on here there's you know um a bit of random elements down there there's lots of sockets here to put things in um that said, it's got a very clean look, I think. It's got it's nice, got bold colours. There's a lot of repetition, so the icons are, rep are repeated um, across parts of the board and you know, player aids as well. So once you get to grips with it, it's much easier to understand what's going on. But when you first look at it, there's a lot to, to, to memorise. I think in terms of it, table presence, mm -hmm. it's beautifully designed, it's beautifully made. And it looks good on the table. And I think, it, you know, we were playing this at Aircon and it was drawing people in. People were looking at what we were playing. It's it, undoubtedly, it is a very well graphically designed mm -hmm. game. The iconography is clear. Once you've got your head around what you were doing, it's quite, quite a simple game. There's no more to this than there is to Castles of Burgundy. Say, again, if you put that in front of somebody with all of the different areas on the main board and the the hexagon and stuff people look at it and go what's going on yeah but this is exactly the same and the table presence of being able to reveal your um design on your pads and stuff is fantastic it, it is it is a, a lovely game and it's it's easy to play once you've got you you know the eight different um sections to the round it's very easy to play and it's surprisingly lighter than i thought it was going to be yeah. is that daunting look you think it's going to be a really heavy um you know focus game it's not it's actually quite a light game to play i i found um yeah you just walk through the phases one yeah. after the other and then once you do that a couple of times yes. you know what you're doing next it's just um, yeah. You know. yeah yeah so it's only obviously a five round game you you could be moving along each phase of each round um but the one thing I, and i alluded to this in in the, in the warm-up to this is is these pads so each player will have two pads then they are slightly different um as in one and the other everybody's got exactly the same and you will be placing these or orthogonally to each other, covering certain sections of the tablets. And then everything that is visible, you will then have access to and will then aid you through the round. The difficulty with the teach is you really need to get through to people that that affects their whole round. And there's only five rounds. So yeah. you're locking them in quite early on in that round to what they can do. So I always say this is important and we will get back to that at the end you will be setting this up so you know what you've got at the end of um in each phase of the round and then i go back to this at the end of the teach 
um, to say, right, now you know what the, the rounds do, you've got to set this. And we did we did something we don't normally do with this. We played a, a dummy round. Yeah. Um yeah. just because I do think it's so important. Um and the rounds are not very they're not very long at all. But it's so important that you understand the locking of the pad because as soon as you rock them in, that's it. You you're done for that round. Um, and you will be picking up extra tiles that you can be placing on top of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's a fantastic mechanic because everybody's got the same opportunity. Everybody's got the same the same bits that they can start with. But I think it's so important that if if you misteach that or somebody's not listening at that point, someone's on their phone or some, something like that, it's um, <laughs> it can be categorically um, just a flaw. To, to their game yeah. and they might not enjoy it because of yeah. it because if they if they think oh well why did i do that halfway through yeah um i think really that could that could really affect their affect their game but that it's my entire like, game in that aspect mm -hmm. if you do make mistakes if only five rounds you know one of those rounds could cost you the game yeah be careful. yeah, yeah. Um, and one of the, the other important things is the price that you're setting items and um, it's a bit tricky to yeah get to because you. yeah the cheaper you set the items yeah the more you could potentially sell but you might not be selling them for as much profit, but you can probably sell them in more places. So, and again, you have to kind of make that that home. So I think, although it's a relatively simple teach, yeah. I think price and these pads are the two that you've really got to hammer on. Yeah. And if you don't, it, it could really upset somebody's, somebody's game. But that withstanding, I think it's a, a really nice um, thematic Euro game. Theme-wise, it's nailed it. You're producing goods to improve your goods that you want to sell to enable you to sell in more markets across the globe, and then rinse and repeat. To get a monopoly, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it's it's thematically it's spot on. It really is. Uh, I, I'm not sure you can reskin it as anything to be honest with you, because it is all about that production and distribution and selling. Mm. It's 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 nailed on. I mean, yeah, said it earlier. It's it's lovely. It's a lovely game to look at. It's lovely, the tactile, yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and it is. It's that theme, and and I think you can go into it with different strategies. Our, our last game, it, it was a case that mm. I started off selling low, sold to a lot of different markets, got my presence in a lot of different markets, and then went right now I can afford to sell at a bit more cost and where people can't get to it. Yeah. Um. Which which was which was great. My late game distribution wasn't on point. It, I, I, it was I almost there. there. It was almost it was, uh, yeah yeah. It was almost there. It was it was almost there. And I, I, I think it was only about. Five or so points. It's another one of those games where you just want no one more round. Isn't it? Yeah, you know, yeah. which is good, I think. Yeah, and coming yeah. back to the price, the the price sets player order as well. So player order is set by the lowest price first, um, and by the furthest behind. So even in fact, it, it up here at the minute, the the yellow cubes are ahead. So John's ahead on on six, but he will be going first because he's got the cheapest yeah. price. So it's really important to know where you are, what where you're going first, because if you go to a place and sell first. Um, or sell, sell first you're the first one to sell you're the only one to sell that yeah. so you can quite quickly lock other players out so whilst you're not directly interfering yeah. with people sell, selling to selling to places it can really 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 affect you, I, your whole game my last round of this when we played uh, Aircon I specifically put my price lower so I could lock Ben out of areas so I could outscore him in that last round it, you know it's yeah. yeah, and you're selling for a little bit lower, but if you're selling and they're not, it, it can be a big, big difference. Yeah. So, yeah. Also, just to, uh, a very, very quick point on this, I have played this on solo mode with the the automata, and, and it's challenging. Um, the automata gets so many, most, so much more the ability than you do, and it has a lot more access to to wide cons and stuff than you do. So, mm. I would highly recommend the solo play on this, and particularly if you've got the one point five pack playing on the on the smaller board, is is much more preferable. So. That's smart honing in a nutshell. So, yeah. um, do you know what? I, I, I said that I would play this again, but I'm, I'm going to change it to we'll play again soon because actually looking at it and talking about it, it's reminded me how, how much I actually enjoyed playing it. Mm. So I think I've improved my rating for the one that I'd initially said that I'd do. So yeah, we'll play again soon, I think. Um, I, I would play again. I'm going to keep to that. Um, it's a good game. I like it. If it came to the table, I'd be keen to play it. Um, there's a lots of games similar kind of weight to this that i also want to play so that's really what's keeping it would play again it's you could put, put this on that category with terraforming mars is that kind of level of thinking yes. thinky game yeah if you like so in terms of getting it out again you're happy to see it again but um yeah. it, you know 
It didn't come out for a couple of weeks. I'd be okay with that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for me, it's a will play again now. I'd love to play it again and, and quite a few times in a row. I think the only, the only limitation to that is potentially some of the groups that, that I play with. So it would be a case that actually I would want it I'd want it out as, as often as I can and I've been trying to get it out for, for as often as possible because I think it is a lovely game I think possibly flies under a lot of people's radar so mm. um, if you can check it out it's definitely worth worth learning it and it's not daunting in, in the slightest so. no it may look it but it, it really isn't it's, it's, it's a it's fairly lighter and easier to understand than, than it first looks yeah. definitely it really yeah. got some weight to those decisions as well yeah Brilliant. so thank you for watching this episode of What Play Again um, and if you haven't done so already please check out our other videos on the channel give us a like and a subscribe and we'll catch you next time take care bye, bye.